Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so if you've watched any of the previous uh, three videos that you should have watched prior to watching this, then you knew what to expect here. Uh, but yeah, as I said in the previous videos, uh, watch them in order. They will make a lot more sense. Um, okay, uh, with that said, um, here we're going to cover uh, the repeated real root case to uh, this here, which is the characteristic quadratic that we get from our second order homogeneous constant coefficient linear differential equation here. Um, yeah, so all three videos prior to this and this are about solving these guys, and we've covered everything we needed to cover except for this case when this quadratic has a repeated real root. Now, we know from our studies on quadratics that uh, when a quadratic has a repeated root, it's always real and it's given by minus b over 2a, right? And therefore, we see that uh, one of our solutions uh, to this differential equation is going to be of the form e to the minus b over 2ax because we said that our solutions to these guys are of the form uh, e to the um, rx or rt, right? Like if y is a function of uh, t, then it'd be e to the rt. And if y is a function of x, it'd be e to the rx, t or x, the y is a function of not a big deal, right? And maybe even another variable. Point is r here is going to be this here because it's a solution to this quadratic and the repeated root, real root case. And when a quadratic has a repeated real root, it'll be minus b over 2a, right? Okay, okay. The trouble is that the second solution is also going to be the same. y1 will be this, and then y2 will also be e to the minus b over 2ax. That's no good. And so then, what do we do? How do we fix this? Well, what we do is we look for a solution of the form this, which is we look for a y2 that is some function w times uh, y1. Right, and this W not to be confused with the Ronskian, which I've mentioned in a couple of uh, previous videos. Uh, I could have like chosen a Z instead of a W here, and that might have been a better choice. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say Ronskian, which was name dropped twice in uh, previous two videos, then um, forget it. Uh, all we're saying here is that since Y1 and Y2 cannot be the same uh, Y, which which is this guy, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, fix y2 by saying that y2 is going to be some function times y1. And so that means y2 is going to be this. Okay, so with this claim, what we're going to do is take uh, some derivatives and uh, we're going to get to figuring out what this wx, w of x is going to look like, what this function has to look like. Now, uh, if y1 and y2 are the same, this is uh, probably not necessary to even state. They're not going to form a fundamental um, pair of solutions to the differential equation, right? And again, uh, I'll name drop the Ronsky in a third time. So uh, when uh, y1 and y2 are a fundamental pair of solutions to a given differential equation like this, uh, when they're a fundamental pair, the Ronskian, which you'll learn about in a future video, is not equal to zero. And the Ronskian, again, is not this. This is just some function that we're going to multiply y12 to make y2. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, so uh, we figure out what y2 prime is and y2 double prime is because, well, y double prime and y prime appear here. And we already have y2, but yeah, we're going to calculate these guys and plug them in here. And we're going to see what comes of that. Maybe they'll tell us the nature of what w has to be. So if you plug in um, y2 prime and y2 double prime based on the claim that y2 be this, then after doing a lot of algebra, what you're going to end up saying is that the constant a times w double prime is equal to 0. Uh, notice that as you are doing um, y2 double prime, w double prime will invariably show up. So basically, after you navigate through the entire algebra of doing this, doing this, and then taking y to itself this, and plugging all of them into this differential equation you're trying to solve, 
uh, the conclusion you'll come up with is that a times w double prime has to equal zero. Well, this immediately means that w double prime will have to equal zero. So to retrieve w, which is which is what we're after, to figure out the general the general form of w, what we need to do is uh, integrate w double prime twice. But as w double prime is equal to zero, its first integral to get to w prime is going to be a constant c. Yeah, you get it. You get it. We have to. Uh, integrate this twice to get to W and that's pretty obvious but yeah after you integrate C in turn you get in the last integral you get CX plus some constant D and so we see that W has to be of this form and if Y is a function of T instead here you'd say uh, CT plus D right but you get it you get it you get it okay now uh, for reasons you, you can imagine we don't need the constants uh, D and C here. So we're just going to take W to be X. And the reason why you don't need them, uh, the constants, I already talked about in great detail in the first video. So you could watch that video. But yeah, initially we'd claim that uh, Y2 is equal to W times Y1 as we have it. And Y1, of course, is this here, which is this here, right? And so now you have Y1 and Y2 looking like this and like this. And so you've got yourself, uh, as you can check later, a fundamental pair of solutions. And so then you could construct a general solution to your differential equation. And given some initial conditions, of course, you can also find a particular solution to your differential equation. And as I said, we don't need C and D the constants, so we're going to get rid of them. And we're just going to say y2 is x times y1, right? Okay, cool. So um, let's get on with that. But we can discard the constants, as I said, and write y2 is that. And so the general solution for repeated roots is always going to be this, right? Where, again, we pulled a and b from uh, this guy here, uh, the characteristic quadratic, right? Okay, okay, okay. And, and so... Of course, as I said, uh, given some initial conditions, we can figure out alpha and beta and therefore get to the particular solution. And yeah, we get to the particular solution through initial conditions, which you are abundantly aware of at this point. So perhaps we conclude with an example and that's that. So the example I'm going to run through quickly because you've seen previous examples and most of the details are going to be repetitions of those. So our solutions are going to be, well, y1 is that and y2 is that. Notice the x uh, in front of the e and y2, but otherwise simplifying these, we don't even need to write minus b over 2a we know that r is negative 3 but minus b over 2a and r equals negative 3 agree and so we've got y1 and y2 here and from this uh, the general solution is going to be throwing alpha in front of y1 and beta in front of y2 and adding them and to find a particular solution uh, we need um, some initial conditions so let's impose these two initial conditions and so from the first initial condition we know that our solution y which is this uh, is equal to negative 4 when x is 0 so we impose that and that means we write this first and it simplifies to alpha being negative 4 and then for the second initial condition to be imposed we need y prime y is here and we take the derivative of y prime keeping in mind that in this part we need to use the product rule for derivatives because we have a product between beta x and e to the minus 3x and that's about the only detail noteworthy but otherwise uh, saying that y prime is negative 1 when x is 0 so making this negative 1 making all the x's here is 0 we get this second uh, imposition uh, if that's uh, what I want to say but whatever this is the math channel channel okay so so we know uh, from our earlier work that alpha is negative 4 so on uh, this part we uh, do that and so we see that beta is going to be beta is going to be negative 13 we have alpha and beta and therefore we can say what our particular solution is and that's that and this is it for teaching you how to solve these fellas I hope it's been a really fun adventure learning how to solve them. It was definitely fun making uh, them for me. So uh, yeah, I'll uh, talk to you in another video. Take care. Bye.